Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. We're going to be talking about Revolve. That can be found under the Surfaces module. This is a pull-down menu here. Surfaces, and you have the Surfaces menu. Revolve. And we're going to talk about all of these nice Revolve options. Now, if you haven't looked at it already, I have Output Geometry Polygons video already talking about all these Convert uh, NURBS to Polygons options. That's what this is. So. I'm not going to go over all these settings in this video. If you want to see more about the converting NURBS to polygons options, definitely take a look at that video. And I'll put a little thing you can click, you know, right here somewhere um, to do that, to go look at that video. So for now, we're going to be focusing on outputting NURBS like is default. When I hit re edit reset. So first, to use a revolve, what revolve does is it takes a curve, a NURBS curve, and revolves it into a shape. So first we need a curve. So we'll close that and go to Create CV Curve Tool. I'm going to hold down the space bar, click on the Maya logo here, and go down the front view. So here's my front view. I'm just going to create um, just some wavy shape. doesn't really matter what. And I'm keeping it over here on the left side of this vertical axis line, the dark line. This is the zero Y axis here. I'm going to keep it over here on the left side. Hit enter. Go back to my perspective view so you can see the result here. So this is what we're going to revolve. It's going to look, look really funky. That's okay. Let's just see what we get with the default settings here. We're going to surfaces, revolve, options, edit, reset, apply. So we get this. So that looks pretty crazy. And what that's doing is it's revolving around the Y axis. So that zero Y axis here is taking this shape and then revolving it around that Y axis and extruding a shape out around that axis, creating this crazy shape here. It's very similar to a lathe process in Max and other programs. So I'm going to delete this and let's go into these options here. So axis preset by default is Y and the Y direction. Get rid of the grid here. And that just means it revolves around that axis. If you choose a different axis, say X, which would be revolving this way, it would probably look kind of weird. Yeah. You get this. So it's revolving around the X axis. Undo that, hit Z. Revolving around the Z axis, which results in a very flat shape because my curve is aligned with the Z axis. Undo that, and if I rotate this like this, hit apply. And that's rotating, that's, that's revolving around the Z axis as well. It's just because I angled the curve, it's getting a different result. Undo all that so it's back to being straight up. Then there's also a free axis, which means you can actually, if you, you see when I, uh, this axis. XYZ check uh, number box here is grayed out until I choose free, which means I can determine the exact angle by putting in numerical values to get the angle I want to revolve around. So if I don't want it to be a straight X, Y, or Z coordinate, like flat angle, I can choose a diagonal by hitting, say, 4 here and 2 there, and I don't know, let's say 5 here, let's see what we get. Yeah, so it's going at a kind of a weird canted angle. So that's using free. And these boxes, they don't they're not they're not labeled, but they refer to X, X, Y, and Z. So the first box is X, second box is Y, third box is Z, using the XYZ coordinates in 3D space. I'm gonna go back to Y just because it's nice and clean. And we use that for the remainder of this video. So that was axis preset. Now pivot is the next one after the grayed out axis number boxes here. We got pivot. By default is object. So you see the pivot of this object is where my handle is, which is right here, which is at the 000 XYZ space on the grid, where these grid lines all intersect is 000 in coordinate space. And by default, when you create any kind of object, any kind of curve, and hit enter, it puts the pivot at 0, 0, 0 in 3D space. And by default, whenever you choose 
to revolve something, it will revolve around that pivot of the object. Hit apply. You see if I go to the top view, it circles around that pivot to get the result. Now you can choose a different pivot. You can say preset and now this pivot point XYZ number boxes open up or ungray. So you can choose say if I wanted the pivot to be further out here in the X direction, I'll say 10. Hit apply and you see now it revolves around the point way out here instead of the object's pivot point. Undo that. Another way you can adjust this if you hit insert on your keyboard. Now depending on your keyboard layout, in the insert button could be in a number of different places. And on my keyboard here on my laptop I'm using right now, it's actually associated with the zero button on my keypad, which means I have to hit shift zero to hit the insert button. A lot of keyboards will just have this, their own insert button. And it might be labeled INS or ISRT or something, or it might be abbreviated in some way. Insert button though. And you hit that button, your cursor will change to an editable pivot, which you can then move that pivot point over here, insert, and then using pivot for the object, hit apply, and then your pivot's over here, and it'll revolve that way. So there's a couple ways you can do that. Reset. So surface degree, now it's, we're using NURBS for our surfaces. So you can have a linear surface or a cubic surface. If it's cubic, which it is by default, hit apply, you'll see that between these spans, these lines, the surface isn't straight from point to point. It's nice and curved and rounded using cubic settings. If I delete this and then you choose linear, and hit apply, you see that my surface is a lot more chunky. Between points, it's just a straight line, which is that linear, what that means is linear from here to here. And I can, I can go more into that. Surface degrees have more than just linear and cubic, but for the point of this video, we're just going to talk about those two. So cubic gives it more of a rounded shape. Kind of ironic, considering cubes are not round. There you go. Between these two spans, it's more rounded using cubic than linear, which is straight lines. Now you have start sweep angle and end sweep angle. These two work together. And if you're familiar with NURB surfaces, they have a sweep, which goes from 0 to 360 most of the time. And by default, that's what this is doing, 0 to 360. If I choose 0 to 180 and hit apply, first select my uh, curve and then hit apply. You see that only rotates or revolves around half of the object instead of the whole thing. And that's using an end sweep of 180. If I choose to start at 90, let me delete that one, and hit apply, you'll see the sweep, the revolve doesn't even start till it gets to 90 degrees and then continues the revolve over here. Delete this. I'm actually going to move my pivot point back to the origin. So it's a little less confusing. So hit apply and you see that. That's how it results with a start of 90 and end of 180 in your sweep angles. We'll take this back to 360 and 0. Okay, so now we have use tolerance. And right now it's none. And use tolerance, when you change this setting, the setting below it will also change based on what you're using. With a use tolerance of none, we have these segments that we can adjust. If we use use tolerance local, it changes to a tolerance slider. And if we use global, that option goes away completely. So first let's go to none. By default, the segments are eight. If we hit apply, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spans on the resulting surface. I'm going to move that over here just to keep it in our minds. Slip my curve again and let's choose 16 segments apply. And you can see the res different results. You get a lot more dense of a surface with a higher segment count. Delete both of those. Hide my grid again. Let's choose local. So local gives you a tolerance slider. 
And again, you can kind of play with this and see what kind of results you get. You hit apply with the default of 0 0.01, you get this. If I adjust this tolerance up and hit apply, you get that. So you can see the different results based on this tolerance slider. If I choose this again and say go all the way up to one and hit apply, you can see the difference. So depending on what you're going for, will de depend on how useful that is for you. And then global, the global the option goes away, but that's because there is a global setting within Maya's like overall preferences that it will use instead of a set one here. If I go to Window, Settings, Preferences, Preferences, this is like Maya's overall preference settings for everything. But down here under Settings, you have Tolerance, Positional and Tangential. So it's using these settings here when you choose a global. So if you ever wonder where this setting is coming from, it's right here in the Preferences. If you adjust these preferences, it'll change what Global does. And Global does this. So that's using those preferences within the uh, preferences window that Maya uses to access all preferences for the whole program. And that's using the Global Use Tolerance. Local gives you the slider, and then None lets you say how many segments you want. I personally prefer being able to say how many segments I want. I think that's a lot more control. A lot less guesswork. Then you have curve range, which is complete and partial. And that's not exactly obvious whenever you're choosing between the two what they do, but I'm going to show you. If I select my curve and choose a complete curve range, which is the default value, hit apply. We get what we've been getting. Choose my curve again, hit partial, and hit apply. Looks like the same thing. I'm going to minimize the options here so we can look at our channel box because that's where the difference comes into play. So this over here, this one, is the revolved surface with using a complete curve range. Using this option here, complete. And this one is using partial. Now you see the, the difference. It's subtle. Over here in channel box, with the complete one, you have revolved one, which gives you these options. With partial, you have revolved two in this case since I have two of them but then also a sub curve one this is a separate channel entry that gets created using a partial curve range which by default is set min value of zero max value of one if I adjust these you can see that you can choose how far along this curve the surface actually revolves so if you don't want the entire curve to revolve the entire shape. If you create this curve but you only want half of it, you can use a sub curve and choose the max value of 0.5 or you can say max value 1 and min value 0.5 to do the other, uh, upper range of the curve and revolve just a certain part of it. So you can create this long curve but then only revolve a certain section of that curve and that's using a partial curve range to give you this option which is pretty cool and you combine that with the start and end sweep you can get a very specific section of this curve to revolve in a very specific way lots of control that is not obvious unless you're looking for it So that's using the uh, partial curve range, and that pretty much ends our options here. I have the output geometry, which is set to NURBS. And again, if you want to see all these polygon options for output geometry, check out the Convert NURBS to Polygons video. Uh, we're going to go over what Subdiv and Bezier do in other times when we talk about those things. But yeah. So here's an addendum to the Revolve tutorial wanted to go over a couple little things that I forgot to mention in the original the main one being history so real quick I'm going to create a new curve go to my side view create CV curve tool and I'm just going to create a swervy shape like this Hit enter back to perspective 
and just like before I'll select to go to services revolve I'll make sure all my settings are reset and hit apply and so we have this revolved shape from the curve now just like every other thing in Maya it has history if I select this curve and choose to edit its shape after the fact because of history the revolved shape will change to match the new shape of the curve so if you haven't quite got the shape you want right off the bat you can always just adjust this curve and fine tune it to get the shape you're looking for like if I didn't want this bulbous thing right here I can really quickly change that to get more of a bird bath type thing so that's one thing I forgot to mention another thing I forgot to mention is you don't necessarily have to use curves well you well let me rephrase you do have to use curves but they're not necessarily curves you have to draw yourself if I delete all this and just create a NURBS sphere and I'll just kinda stretch it out a little bit just to make it a little bit interesting you can just select if I right click on my sphere and choose isoparm as my component selection method you can choose to select any of these lines so I'll choose that one and choose surfaces revolve and it will revolve a shape based on that chosen isoparm I'll move this to the side here so now if I manipulate my sphere that revolved shape will also change because of history because this curve that I used from the spheres surface to create this is changing and this also works if I flip this real quick if I go back to my revolve options choose an isoparm and say set my curve range to partial apply I'll move my revolved surface to the side so you can see it better if you go choose the original sphere and show manipulator tool and then in the channel box if you click on the curve from surface here you again have your min max values and stuff but you also have this handy tool in the scene if you click and drag on these blue handles you can manually adjust what the partial range of the curve that you're revolving without having to use numbers you can just use these little handles thanks to the show manipulator tool so that's something I totally forgot to mention it's also obviously very cool so that's an addendum to the revolve tutorial hope you liked it uh, definitely let me know if I forgot anything else I'll definitely make an addendum and add it to the video and uh, thanks a lot that's pretty much it for revolve I hope you learned something if you like this video or definitely comment let me know if you have any preferences or suggestions if I miss something definitely let me know if I miss something I don't want to miss anything I want to try and give you guys as complete a knowledge base as I can on all this stuff so definitely let me know if I miss something or if I screwed something up I'll go back and fix it so thanks a lot guys this has been the Maya tool belt I hope you enjoyed it bye